Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the bowtie chart. Now, the bowtie chart is an interesting one in that it's designed really to show a flowing of data. Now, you'll see some people like the screenshot below or to the right here showing it more as a hierarchical view of the data where you can see how many values are coming out of the year 2016 or 2017 and going into February, January, or March. Now, that's one way to do it, and that's actually going to be similar to how I'm going to show my example here later. But just note that this really is useful for seeing a flow of data from one process to another, how many people started, let's say, perhaps in a prospecting stage of a sales opportunity, and then moved on to actually closing that opportunity. So this is actually kind of useful for seeing that flow moving from one branch to another branch. Now, you can have a couple different ways to be able to visualize this. You can actually have a half bow tie or a full bow tie. Now, a full bow tie is what you see on the right-hand side where it has both right and left-hand sides. Whereas a half bow tie would essentially be just what you see on the right hand side, where you see how many total values that there are, and then how they split between each of the months. So that would be an, uh, an example of a half bow tie. Now the thickness of the lines or the thickness of the branches is indicated by the weight of the category, so how much the value actually has. So that you can see 18,000 values in 2016 has a thicker line than the 9,000 values in 2017. So that thickness is actually driven by the weight of the category. And then there's summary label. That's the label that you see in the middle where it says values 27,000. That can actually have an indicator next to it as well. So if you want it to, you can actually, it's a very simple indicator, not, not a ton you can do there. But there's a simple little indicator where you can place a up or down arrow, an up green arrow or a red down arrow, whether or not you met or reached a goal. Unfortunately, that goal is something you have to manually type in. So hopefully in the future, the bow tie will actually have where that can be data driven. But for the time being, it is a, a, a manual typed in goal that you can type in. All right, so let's go ahead and walk you through where you can go download the bowtie chart and then how to use it inside the Power BI desktop. All right, so our first step here is in the Office Store. So you're going to go to store.office.com. And once you go there, that's actually the site I'm already at. And from this site, you can go search underneath the Power BI section here. And uh, probably the easiest way to find the bowtie chart is to actually just use the little search in the top left. So I can type bow tie or bow tie chart and see the bow tie chart available here. And you can see this is designed by MAQ Software. And if we want to use this one, we would go ahead and select it here and then tell it that we want to add this chart. You can download the bow tie visual here, or you can also look at a sample of the, what this is used or how it's used on the right hand side. So if you download the sample, it's a Power BI desktop file that you can kind of test out and validate how this can be used before you try and apply your own data to it. All right, in my case, I've already downloaded the bowtie chart, so let's go over to the Power BI desktop now and walk you through how we can actually use this. Now, in our example, the way that we're going to use this is by bringing in some categorical sales data. So I have a category of a product and a subcategory of the product, and I want to be able to see of those subcategories how much of those data or how much of that sales is being allotted to each of the subcategories, okay? So to do that, what we would do is start off by going to get our data. We'll go up to the Get Data section here. And we'll bring in this data from Excel. And then the data is going to be um, a data set that I have available to me here called subcategory sales. And I'll hit open. Once I hit open, that's going to connect and bring in the data into the navigator pane. And then I will select the spreadsheet from that workbook, the sales spreadsheet, that I want to bring into our example here. All right, so you can see subcategory and category sales. If you want to picture the bow tie we saw a few moments ago, one side of the chart is going to have subcategory, the other side of the chart is going to have category. And then the sales is going to be the distribution and the weight of the categories that we see. All right, so let's go ahead and hit load to bring this data into Power BI Desktop. And once it loads this in, we'll go ahead and then import the bowtie chart to show you how it works. So we'll select import from file underneath the visualizations pane here. And I'll set, select to import a custom visual. Go ahead and hit import again. And we'll go find wherever you downloaded the custom visual. For me, I have it in this special place right here. I'll select the bowtie chart and hit open. All right, so it says I successfully imported the bowtie chart. Now we'll go ahead and bring it into the design surface. And tell you what, I'm going to make this rather large so we can get a good view of it. I'm not going to bring anything else in this report. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and bring in, first of all, let's bring in the total sales. I'll drop that underneath the value section here. And then we'll bring in, you can tell here that it's asking us to either have a source and or destination. And so what we'll do is we'll bring in, let's say, the category underneath the destination here. And so if I drop category underneath destination, this is what's referred to as a half bow tie. Okay, so I saw you, I mentioned this in the slides a few moments ago. This is actually kind of the idea of a half bow tie. Now, if you want to make it a full bow tie, you simply add in another item here in as a source. So I could add in something like subcategory as the source, 
and you'll see how it kind of rearranges this so we can see the values that are coming from the categories of accessories, bikes, and clothing into the subcategories and how much data move from one to another. Okay. So again, this is one way you can use the bowtie chart. It's awfully useful. It's more useful probably whenever you're trying to see the process flow of something. Like I said, a sales opportunity where you can see the number of opportunities that you had that you prospected and those that you actually closed. It would be a nice chart for something like that as well. All right. So let's show some of the things that you can do with this chart. The first thing I'd like to do is show you how you can do some simple things like changing the color. If you don't like the color and you want to adjust it, you can do that by going underneath the format paintbrush here. And then underneath the general section, you'll see here the arc fill color. That's where you can actually address the, adjust the colors that are being used here. So if I wanted to make this something like more of a red, I can adjust that here. And then it certainly is quickly changed to more of that red color. We can also do things like change the uh, title text, the title being up in the top left. If we go down a section here, you can see the bow tie title. Here you can adjust the title itself. So for example, right now it says total sales by subcategory and category. Maybe just for um, proper casing here, a proper phrasing, I'm going to put a space between total and sales, like so, and I can adjust the title very easily there. I can also increase the title size if I want to. I can bump that up a little bit here so it's a little easier to read. And then you'll also notice this little question mark here. That question mark is a tooltip, and it's really just used to, design, to be designed so that you can add in some kind of description of what the chart is showing. In addition to the title, you can kind of add a little bit of a story of what's going on with this visual. And so what I might do in here is I might add in some te text like watch the flow of which subcategories get purchased most often. And as I type that in here, that also appears now underneath the tooltip here. Okay, so you can kind of see that's really what the purpose of that's for is just to add a little tooltip so you can give some additional information. All right, so that's the bowtie title. Let's move down here a little bit to the data labels. Underneath the data label section here, you can increase the data label size for all the data labels that we have on our visual. So we might want to bump this up a little bit to make it a little easier to read the data labels that we have. You can also change the color. So if you wanted to adjust the color, if you don't like it being that kind of off gray, you maybe wanted more pure black, you can change it to that. You can also change it to something completely different if you wanted to. So I could have made this something like uh, more of a blue and tell you what, these all look pretty terrible. Let's revert that back to the default. All right. So that's how you can kind of adjust some of the data labels in here as well. All right, the next thing I want to show you is underneath the summary label settings. And the summary label is this middle section that you see right here. First of all, we probably want to increase the text size of that a little bit. There we go. So you can see I'm increasing the text size of what you see in the middle. And one thing I noticed, first of all, is that you can see that the formatting of the numbers, whether it's in the summary label or the numbers that we have on the data labels, it doesn't have any like comma separator. It's not very clear what the, the data we're looking at is because you don't know if it's a dollar amount. So one of the things you'll probably want to do is just do some typical Power BI formatting to this. And you can do that simply by selecting the total sales measure, going up to the modeling section, and then changing this to something like a U.S. currency. So I can go under currency, make this U.S. currency, and then it should add in a dollar sign and a comma separator there for me. Now I also can see here that I probably want to make the size of the summary label a little smaller so we can see the full number here. Okay, something like that. All right, the other thing that you can do with inside the summary label is you can actually add an indicator. So you'll see there's an ability here to turn on an indicator. If we go a little bit lower, the indicator off is already set, but you can flip that on and that actually adds in a little indicator here next to your label. Now, the indicator right now is based off of this threshold that you see on the bottom or based off of these uh, sign indicators. So if you want to be able to adjust the threshold that's being used here, you can turn off the sign indicator and then actually come down to the threshold. And now you can manually adjust this. So if I wanted to, I could make this something like 30 million. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can see now it's a red indicator indicating that we did not meet our goal, the threshold being 30 million. Uh, so we did not meet our goal. If I change this to something more like 29 million, then of course we did meet our goal and you can see it returns back to a green value there. So that's how the summary label works. Again, you might want to adjust some of the things with that, maybe the color with it if you'd like. You saw that there's the ability to change colors just about anywhere that you see here, including the, the branches. We already did that here in this case. So keep that in mind. Now, one thing I'll point out to you is there's not a lot of cross filtering. There's not really any cross filtering you can do with this. So you can see if you try and select things, nothing actually gets selected. So it's more of a visual where it will allow you to filter outside of this. So say, for example, I add in a little uh, slicer real quick and maybe put the categories on that slicer. And let's increase the text size of that, of course. That's really tiny. So that'll be under item here. 
bump up the text size a little bit. And I can select items here and it'll actually apply filtering, but just note that it won't do reverse filtering. It won't, there's no back and forth filtering. I can't select an item here and then it filters somewhere else. Everything can be filtered and go into the bow tie. It's just not going to go the other way around. Okay. The other thing to note here is that indicator. You might want to turn off that indicator because it because it's not dynamic. As you actually change and filter things down, it's still looking for a $29 million value, even when we filter this down to just clothing. So it looks like we didn't meet our goal because, of course, in clothing we didn't sell the 29 million or 30 uh, 30 million. We sold 339,000. So that's kind of how this works. You might want to, like I said, turn off that indicator if it doesn't make sense for what you're doing. If you know that you're going to be filtering and changing values a lot in the bow tie, then it may make sense to turn it off. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that here. All right. Well, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the bow tie chart. It's a really neat, interesting one. And I look forward to showing you our next visual in the next module. Thanks a lot.